Hey guys, really quick note here. After filming this, I decided to make this into a full course instead of just a single standalone set of videos. So over the coming 20 to 30 days, be on the lookout for the free reinforcement learning course. It's going to cover basically everything you need to know to get started, to start reading research papers and implementing algorithms on your own. Hope you enjoy the video. See you soon. Welcome back, data manglers. Thanks for tuning in for another episode from Neuralnet.ai. If you're new to the channel, I'm Phil Tabor, a physicist and former semiconductor engineer turned machine learning practitioner. I'm on a mission to teach the next generation of data engineers so we can stay one step ahead of our robot overlords. If you're not subscribed, be sure to do that now so you don't miss any future reinforcement learning content. We've touched on reinforcement learning many times here on the channel as it represents our best chance at developing something approximating artificial general intelligence. We've covered everything from Monte Carlo methods to deep Q learning to policy gradient methods using both the PyTorch and TensorFlow frameworks. What we haven't discussed on this channel is the what and the how of reinforcement learning. That oversight ends today, right now. Okay, maybe a few seconds from now, but either way, we're going to cover the essentials of reinforcement learning. But first, let's take a quick step back. You're probably familiar with supervised learning, which has been successfully applied to fields like computer vision and linear regression. Here, we need mountains of data, all classified by hand, just to train a neural network. While this has proven quite effective, it has some pretty significant limitations. How do you get the data? How do you label it? These barriers put many of the most interesting problems in the realm of mega corporations, and this does us, the individual practitioners, no good. To top it off, it's not really intelligence. You and I don't have to see thousands of examples of a thing to understand what that thing is. Most of us learn actively by doing. Sure, we can shortcut the process by reading books or watching YouTube videos, but ultimately we have to get our hands dirty to learn. If we abstract out the important concepts here, we see that the essential stuff is the environment that facilitates our learning, the actions that affect that environment, and the thing that does the learning, the agent. No jacket or labels required. Enter reinforcement learning. This is our attempt to take those ingredients and incorporate them into artificial intelligence. The environment can be anything from text-based environments like card games, to classic Atari games, to, real, to the real world, at least if you're not afraid of Skynet starting an all-out nuclear war, that is. Our AI interacts with this environment through some set of actions, which is usually discreet. Move in some direction or fire at the enemy, for instance. These actions, in turn, cause some observable change in the environment, meaning the environment transitions from one state to another. So, for example, in the Space Invaders environment, in the OpenAI gym, attempting to move left caused the agent to move left with 100% probability. That need not be the case, though. In the Frozen Lake environment, attempting to move left can result in the agent moving right, or up, or down, even. So just keep that in mind that these state transitions are probabilistic and the probabilities don't have to be 100%, merely their sum. The most important part of the environment is the reward or penalty the agent receives. If you take only one thing away from this video, it should be that the design of the reward is the most critical component of creating effective reinforcement learning systems. This is because all reinforcement learning algorithms seek to maximize the reward of the agent. Nothing more, nothing less. In fact, this is where the real danger of AI is. It's not that it would be malicious, but that it would be ruthlessly rational. The classic example is the case of an artificial general intelligence whose reward is centered around how many paperclips it churns out. Sounds innocent, right? Well, if you're a paperclip making bot and you figure out that humans consume a bunch of resources that you need to make paperclips, and those pesky humans are in the way of an orderly planetary scale office. That's problematic for all involved. What this means is we must think long and hard about what we want to reward the agent for and even introduce penalties for undertaking actions that endanger human safety, at least in systems that will see action in the real world. Perhaps less dramatic, although no less important, are the implications for introducing inefficiencies in your agent. Consider the game of chess. 
you might be tempted to give the agent a penalty for losing pieces, but this would potentially prevent the agent from discovering gambits, where it sacrifices a piece for a longer term positional advantage. The Alpha Zero engine, a chess playing artificial intelligence, is notorious for this. It will sacrifice multiple pawns and yet still dominate the best traditional chess engines we have to offer. So we have the reward, the actions, and the environment. What of the agent itself? The agent is the part of the software that keeps track of these state transitions, actions, and rewards, and looks for patterns to maximize its total reward over time. The algorithm that dictates how the agent will act in any given situation or state of the environment is called its policy. It is expressed as a probability of choosing some action A given the environment is in some state S. Please note these probabilities are not the same as the state transition probabilities. The mathematical relationship between state transitions, rewards, and the policy is known as the Bellman equation, and it tells us the value, meaning the expected future reward of a policy for some state of the environment. Reinforcement learning often, though not always, means maximizing or solving that Bellman equation. More on that in future videos. This desire to maximize reward leads to a dilemma. Should the agent maximize his short-term reward by exploiting the best known action, or should it be adventurous and choose actions whose reward appears smaller or maybe even unknown? This is known as the explore-exploit dilemma, and one popular solution is to choose the best known action most of the time, and occasionally choose a suboptimal action to see if there's something better out there. This is called an epsilon greedy policy. When we think of reinforcement learning, we're often thinking about the algorithm the agent uses to solve the Bellman equation. These generally fall into two categories, algorithms that require a full model of their environment and algorithms that don't. What does this mean exactly to have a model of the environment? As I said earlier, actions cause the environment to transition from one state to another with some probability. Having a full model of the environment means knowing all the state transition probabilities with certainty. Of course, it's quite rare to know this beforehand, and so the algorithms that require a full model are of somewhat limited utility. This class of algorithms is known as dynamic programming. If we don't have a model, or our model of the environment is incomplete, we can't use dynamic programming. Instead, we have to rely on the family of model-free algorithms. One popular such algorithm is Q-learning or deep Q-learning, which we studied on this channel. These rely on keeping track of the state transitions, actions, and rewards to learn the model of the environment over time. In the case of Q-learning, these parameters are saved in a table, and in the case of deep Q-learning, the relationships between them are expressed as an approximate functional relationship, which is learned by a deep neural network. That's really all there is, at least at a high level. So to recap, reinforcement learning is a class of machine learning algorithms that help an autonomous agent navigate a complex environment. The agent must be given a sequence of rewards or penalties to learn what is required of it. The agent attempts to maximize this reward over time, or in mathematical terms, to solve the Bellman equation. The algorithms that help the agent estimate future rewards fall into two classes. Those that require we know the state transition probabilities for the environment beforehand, and those that don't. Since knowing these probabilities is a rare luxury, we often rely on model-free algorithms like deep Q learning. If you'd like to know more, please check out some of the other videos on this channel. I hope this has been helpful. Please leave a comment, a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Look forward to seeing you all in the next video.